Welcome to the Hunt Air FanWall VFD Startup Tutorial. Today, we're going to walk you through a basic FanWall VFD startup. Let's start with a remote display connection. First, connect the remote display from the VFD I.O. port to the B port of the first VFD in the chain using a Cat5 cable. Then, connect each VFD in the chain. Next, connect the web port on the VFD display to your PC or server if external monitoring of your VFD chain is desired. Each VFD has its own built-in pressure transducer that connects directly to its respective motor. This simplifies setup. Make sure the transducer tubing is hooked up correctly with low pressure in the front port and high pressure in the back. This will be clearly labeled on your FanWall VFD. Before commissioning your VFDs, make sure all the terminal switches are in the correct positions. On all VFDs in the chain except the last one, terminal switches 1 and 2 should be in the off position. The last VFD in the chain should have both terminal switches set on. Now it's time to commission your VFDs. Note that except for the VFD connected to the keypad, all VFDs must be powered off prior to commissioning. Only one VFD can be commissioned at a time. Turn on the VFD connected to the remote display. Navigate to System and select Add VFD. The fault light on the VFD should be flashing. Once the display announces that the VFD has been detected, select the desired VFD number and press Auto. Wait for the display to indicate that the VFD has been commissioned, then turn on the next decommissioned VFD in the network. The fault light will flash until the VFD is commissioned. The next available number will be assigned in numerical order if the number is not manually selected on the remote display. Verify that the fault light has stopped flashing before continuing on and commissioning the next VFD. Repeat these steps, turning on the next VFD and waiting for the fault light to stop flashing. Remember to assign a number to your VFD on the remote display if you choose to do so. When all VFDs have been commissioned, press Done on the remote display. Select VFD SN, meaning serial number, on the system menu. Verify that all commissioned VFDs are in the list. Now your VFDs have been commissioned and you're ready to begin the startup process. Navigate to Setup and then to Motor. Use the arrows in the upper right hand corner to select the first VFD in your chain. In most cases, this is VFD1. If you are controlling an induction motor, enter your horsepower, FLA, motor voltage, and RPM into the appropriate fields. If you are controlling a permanent magnet motor, select which motor you have on your fan wall from the list of options. Once the appropriate selection is made, the parameters will be auto-populated. Verify that each parameter is correct. More advanced settings, such as acceleration and deceleration time, speed limits, and skip frequency can be found in Setup, VFD. Now we're going to copy the information you just entered to the rest of the drives on the fan wall. Navigate to Setup, System, Copy. Copy from the first VFD in your chain to VFD All. When completed, make sure all drives have been successfully copied. If failures are detected, be sure all drives listed as failed are turned on with their respective motors turned off. Also, be sure that each VFD's terminal switches are in the appropriate positions. 
And that's it. Your FanWall VFDs are set up and ready for use. Thanks for watching.